please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This is Bazaar Morning Call live from the CNBC TV 18 headquarters in Mumbai. TCS has started off F519 on a very strong note. The group that we are seeing is very broad based. If you're going to see digital as a contribution to go up, you know, 30-35% uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. The ease of doing business is out. Andhra Pradesh is in pole position. We enacted an act with a clear commitment on timelines for delivery for over 60 services to businesses. The Trump administration released an additional list of 10% tariffs on $200 billion in Chinese goods. Good morning, welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me is Sonia. And I think that montage summed up the list of things that will be on our plate today and on the market's mind. First up, of course, mind-blowing numbers from TCS. At long last, it looks like if they are going to maintain this tempo, TCS is going to become a double-digit uh, earnings growth number. Uh, they have lingered in the 7 to 8% for a goodish bit. I think two years, FY17 and FY18. Yes. So that's a great start to the earnings season. You know, we were jeering yesterday, same time. Accenture is doing 12 to 13%. Uh, should global, will global investors start to rethink uh, Indian IT? Here it is possibly 12% uh, this year from Indian majors as well. So it's not just TCS, uh, the market will watch whether Infosys and uh, Wipro and the others can follow suit. So that's going to be a very big tailwind for the market, uh, the IT sector. Uh, the other big uh, point that uh, we must remember is that uh, there is definitely a change in FII mood. Now, of course, this can change, uh, you know, if crude were to jump or if, uh, uh, you know, the trade war becomes a screech, then things could recede. But yesterday we saw a smaller selling number. We have seen a smaller selling number for July as a whole. Uh, and more importantly, FII long positions yeah. in the futures market, both yesterday and day before. Together, uh, Nigel pointed out, uh, is almost 30,000 crores. Yes. It's it's uh, it's a definitely an outlier number. So these are, of course, weighing in favor of the bulls. But then today morning, we, are, we could be starting on the back foot as far as Asia is concerned. So let's see who wins. Uh, yes, uh, you know, on that uh, subject, uh, on the back foot, maybe, but I mean, one thing this is known, right? This additional $200 billion of goods that was to be put on China, that's yes. known. And two, if you've seen what's happened in the past, every dip has generally been used yes. as a buying opportunity, especially in India. So I was just mapping the last three, four months. I mean, if you look at the Nifty now, it's up almost 10% from the lows in March. It's up almost 4% from the lows in May. So it's sort of a higher tops and higher May. So it's sort of a higher tops and higher higher bottom situation despite all the trade skirmishes and everything and uh, I take your point entirely about you know uh, some of the negatives that the market still has to contend with and one of that is crude mm. so Brent crude continues to be on the boil it's now uh, would close back closer to $79 a barrel but having said that FI selling has reduced uh, TCS numbers are good and Lata on, on TCS particularly uh, I was going through some of the brokerage notes a lot of brokerages have now raised their EPS estimates yes. from 85 to almost 90 on some of them and despite the 40% rally that TCS has seen. So I guess the positive management commentary is something that the street is taking with both hands. Oh, absolutely. You know, ultimately, earnings is the motor of the market. And even if you looked at the US markets, and yesterday you summarized it very well, the earnings season, it's not just that they are, the earnings season is very good. Many of them are above expectation. In yeah. fact, today the data says that 86% of the earnings announced so far are above expectation. Yeah. So it was a 24% earnings growth last quarter. The expectation is a 20% earnings growth this quarter. And so far, not a great deal of numbers have come, but those that have come have exceeded expectations. And, you know, when the world, when the biggest economy in the world grows, other economies benefit. You can see that in TCS numbers. Yeah. You can see it in Bajaj Auto's numbers. I mean, when the world is sticking, mm. you know, exports do well. And all the, about 48% of... Uh, uh, nifty earnings are dependent on uh, global earnings. Mm. So, you know, these uh, on uh, export growth. 
So this is rubbing off very positively on earnings. Uh, let's wait and see once a sparrow does not, once swallow does not a summer oh, make. Yeah. TCS has started with a bang. We don't know if other earnings will follow suit. Even Indicent Bank was not bad yesterday. I mean, 29% loan growth is something that I guess, you know, the street would take with both hands. But let's do one thing. We'll be talking a lot about all of these uh, uh, stocks through the course of the day. Let's tell you what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Neelkan Mishra of Credit Suisse believes a 6% rise in the dollar INR would push up the Nifty profits by approximately 4%. He states that more than 50% of the Nifty revenues are not rupee denominated from sectors like IT, pharma, metals and refiners. He believes that the dollar cost uh, but the rupee revenues in cement, paints, FMCG will get hurt. Uh, Credit Suisse says overweight, they are overweight on IT, metals and underweight on cement and discretionary. The only sectors with significant domestic value add benefits are agriculture, textiles, leather and two-wheelers. Okay, so that's the dollar uh, cost and uh, rupee benefit for you. Let's get some money market views as well. Pramit Bravabat of Veracity says, despite a softer dollar, the rupee may trade sideways with a negative bias due to the trade war concerns. He expects to see a trading range of 68.50 to 69 against the dollar. That's fairly broad. It should be with that. Okay, well, uh, on the bonds, Dawal Dalal of Edelweiss says the 10-year bond yields continue to consolidate between 7.85 to 7.95 in the near term, despite announcements of a higher-than-expected MSP increase and its likely impact on inflation. The rupee's range-bound levels as well as lighter trading positions may have contributed to this. He expects market participants to focus on the June CPI and systemic liquidity. With the recent increase in MSP, the odds for the August rate hikes have increased significantly in their opinion. However, Indian bond yields will likely be driven by US yields, emerging market currencies and the banking system liquidity in the very near term. Okay. All right, uh, let's get to the world view. Nigel is here. Well, things look good overnight. In fact, all the U.S. markets, they ended in the green. The Dow put on more than 100 points. There's a bit of a winning streak as well on the Dow. There are four straight sessions in terms of a winning streak. And the uh, S&P 500, well, that's at the highest levels we've seen in the last five months or so. In yesterday's trading session, PepsiCo came out with its set of numbers. That looked good. That stock was high with a gain of around 4%. And on the whole, the earnings season is expected to be very, very good. The first quarter of this year, the earnings growth was nearly around 20%. The second quarter as well, majority of the street is expecting an earnings growth of closer to around 20% in the United States. So no worries on that front. The European markets as well looked good. So everyone's bracing for a positive start. Unfortunately, early this morning, the queues that we are stacked up against us is in fact the US government has released a list of around 200 billion worth of goods from China, China that could get taxed by around 10%. The probable list includes dog and cat food, poor pets out there. You have some of those electronics as well that have come under that list. And the street doesn't like that for sure. The global markets are in a bit of a tizzy. All the Asian markets are trading in the red, though they've come off a tad bit from the low point of the day. The SGX Nifty as well is indicating a start in the back foot. Commodity prices have taken a bit of a knock. Brent crude prices, though, down close to around a percent. That could be a bit of a positive. Back to okay. you. Okay, I didn't thanks. know that dog and cat food created uh, the U.S. trade More deficit. Pets. <laughs> okay, yes, I mean, they have lots of pets, right? And that much, the Chinese much higher dominate than... even that market, <laughs> the dog and cat food market. All right, uh, well, you know what? I just want to point out that the, uh, the Asian markets have recovered a lot from the day's lows. So the Hong Kong market specifically is uh, off its lows, I think, by about 100 points or so. So keep an eye out on that. But the stock of the morning definitely is TC after those terrific numbers. My colleague Reema is at the TCS headquarters in Mumbai and she joins in for a quick wrap. She will be speaking to the management very soon as well. Uh, Reema, no problems in, in the numbers at all this time. Yes, Sonia, absolutely. You can't find fault in these numbers. It's a stellar beat on all parameters. So first on revenue, on a constant currency basis, the revenue growth stands at 4.1% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the best in the last 15 quarters on, in margins. Despite a wage hike, they managed to limit the margin decline to about 40 basis points versus expectations of 100 basis points, courtesy rupee as well as some operational efficiencies. The erstwhile drags, which came in the form of BFSI and retail, now seems to be behind the company. So BFSI has turned around smartly, 3.7% quarter-on-quarter growth. Retail has seen a 3.6% quarter-on-quarter growth in constant currency. And the management commentary on both BFSI as well as retail is quite optimistic. On digital, uh, digital now contributes 25% to the company's overall portfolio and has seen a whopping 45% growth on a year-on-year -year basis and 9.1% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So that's clearly driving the momentum there. For the first time ever, the companies disclosed their deal wins, so they've indicated 
indicated that the total contract value of deal win stands at $4.9 billion in Q1. If you break that up, BFSI is about $1.6 billion and retail is $760 million, which means BFSI plus retail is close to about 50% of the deal wins uh, in the quarter gone by. So the street is very optimistic. They're now expecting the company to clock in a double digit or a 10% constant currency growth in F519. Their EPS estimates have been raised to about 89 90 rupees per share, which would make the stock a bit expensive compared to what it historically trades at, at close to about 21 times. But there are the brokerages like Jefferies who've upgraded the stock, though on the other hand, Kotak is uh, still a reduce on the back of expensive valuations. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much for that. It's a tussle between value and valuations. Thank you very much, uh, Reema. And uh, we will look forward to your chat with the management. Uh, uh, meanwhile, here's a long-time watcher of the Indian IT skies, especially TCS, Mushi Khatri, Managing Director of Wedbush Securities, joins us on the phone line. Thank you very much, Mushi, uh, for staying up for us and taking this late call. Uh, well, uh, it looks like mind-blowing numbers, you know, 4.1% uh, constant currency growth, margins uh, falling by a mere 40 basis. We were all preparing for much worse. And BFSI, the banking finance uh, vertical firing away. Uh, your first thoughts? Well, we hope this is the inflection point that we've been looking for. Um, and uh, this is an industry that's been going through hell. Uh, it's been very tough two, three years. We've seen a lot of things, revenue cannibalization. We've seen margin pressure from the legacy business. Uh, we've seen challenges in terms of ramping and building a digital business. A lot of disruption, um, and uh, as I said, I think the hope is that um, you know some you know certain elements in terms of spending, uh, whether it's legacy, uh, whether it's digital, whether it's financial services, specifically in North America, all these will help get us through that inflection point. Um, mm. So yeah, was I would say, as, as Rima indicated, no no complaints so far, mm. but let's see how it falls through. Um, we did see um, ISG talking about it, a pickup in outsourcing. We did see Accenture's bookings and outsourcing pickup. That is an indicator that that's an indicator that the legacy business um, seems to be recovering, mm. and that's a good uh, that's good news because in a way it kind of maybe uh, weakens the cannibalization process that you're getting on revenues. But why are you saying uh, you hope it is an inflection point? Isn't it the inflection point? Um, well, uh, one quarter doesn't make a trend, as you know. Okay. All right. <laughs> and uh, obviously, we've grown to be uh, skeptics of a lot of things in this market. And that's why I said there's hope. And we need to see that follow through. Okay, all right. Uh, you always live in hope, right? Uh, Moshe, good morning. A lot of this perhaps could be in the price, you think, because the stock is up about 40% this year. And would you raise your EPS estimates for the full year based on these earnings? Well, we don't cover TCS officially here, but I would say two things on that. One, investors are willing to pay for inflection points and growth. Uh, accelerating growth is worth a better multiple. That's typically the rule of thumb. Um, on top of that, uh, you still have the skeptics out there that are talking about margin compression for the entire industry. Clearly, this is not happening. Uh, and if we see margins uh, doing a bit better, I think that's also kind of a deviation from uh, the bear case. Um, and um, so, you know, at this point, the, the, what's working for a lot of these names, as I said, is that you're seeing accelerating growth, maybe or hopefully. And you still have the skeptics out there. Um, and if, if they really prove them wrong, uh, there's probably more room for these stocks to work. What is your view on how the BFSI vertical will shape up? Do you think it could be the start of a, a long journey on the uptrend? Because this is the first time that the company has given a breakup of the BFSI deal wins, uh, the deal wins with respect to retail, etc. But purely on BFSI, do you think things are picking up now? BFSI, well, when you talk about BFSI, you have to distinguish between the European side versus the North American part of the business. Europe has actually been doing well. Uh, the lagging part was North America, and this is what TCS spoke about during their earnings call today. So the, the inflection point or the pickup is actually seen out of North America. That's good news. Um, and if you think about this, if the pickup is predominantly on the outsourcing piece, 
that's the 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 maintenance part. These are the the legacy like services combined with a larger deal flow coming in from digital. You know, unless you have some sort of a crazy event happening you know, happening in the market, it seems that at this point this seems sustainable. And I'm saying that because, as you know, budgets are not engraved in stone, and budgets can change. But at this point, you know, uh, we're just again. So you have ISG, you have Accenture, and you have TCS, and all these companies, all these three players are talking about that recovery. That's a good sign. Moshe, so would you extend it to the sector, as you point out, uh, ISG, Accenture, and uh, TCS? So now, would you extend? better than expected numbers? Would you rework your expectations for Infosys, uh, for Wipro, for other Indian IT majors? I think it can probably, uh, there's definitely a case to be made about reworking uh, estimates higher. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, from some of the conversations that I've had this morning, throughout the morning with investors, you definitely see the skeptics out there saying, well, you know, TCS is gaining share. It's not necessarily a, an industry-wide phenomenon. So, again, it's good that there are skeptics out there because this is not a crowded trade, especially for some of the U.S.-based names. Uh, and if, um, if we are right, mm. this, and this is more of an industry-wide phenomenon, I do think that numbers will probably go higher. We will, of course, be speaking to the top management of TCS very soon. But ahead of that, the uh, Asian markets have actually recovered from the lows. Remember, there was an immediate drop after the Trump administration sought tariffs on additional $200 billion of Chinese goods. But now there's been a tad bit of a recovery. It's still down and out, actually. 380 points gone on Hong Kong. The Chinese market's under a lot of pressure this morning. Let's see whether there's any buying on dips in our own markets because we've had it really good. Uh, and uh, as, you know, as we've been pointing out, out huge um, long positions added in the futures market as well so let's see how that shapes up through the course of the day for now the SGX Nifty is indicating that we could be uh, in for a bit of a volatile start but a couple of stocks in focus this morning so let's drill it down to that uh, IDFC Bank will be in focus today Abhishek is here to tell us why Abhishek well, Sonia, uh, India ratings, that is the Fitch, has downgraded the ratings of NCDs of I IDFC Bank from AAA to AA. The rating revision has been done because the liability franchise of IDFC Bank is taking more time to get built up. And a rating revision will hurt the cost of funds because from a AAA rated entity, you are now a AA rated entity. So that can impact their cost of funds rising in a current uh, rate scenario. Overall, analysts also have been bearish on the stock and we have seen huge target price and earnings revision from analysts. So expect the stock to be in red today. Okay. Uh, Sonal, uh, clearly the gas uh, bids announcement is going to excite some stocks. Absolutely, Lata. The gas stocks were in focus yesterday as well and today they'll be in focus again because after the bids got closed, reports are suggesting that Adani has emerged as the highest bidder for the city gas distribution bids. Uh, Adani CGD, that is the city gas distribution arm, was demerged from Adani Enterprises. However, the process hasn't taken place. Uh, taken over finally. Uh, other stock that will be in focus is Gale because Gale Gas Limited, that is a subsidiary, has also bid for around 30 cities. Uh, other than that, OMCs and some of the CGD companies like IGL, MGL and Gujarat Gas have also put in higher bids for uh, this particular round of bids. So all these stocks will be in focus today. That. Well, let's move on. Some auto wins coming through hard and fast. Uh, Anisha is with us to tell us which stock is on her radar. Anisha. Thank you, Sonia, for that. Uh, KC International has actually bagged orders with around 1,400 odd crores. Now, they have bagged TND orders in a sizable number, and this is across uh, various geographies. In fact, they have made a foray into the America side of business as well, so that is a positive. Other than that, their cable business is also doing well. They have bagged some orders in that business as well. So, definitely a positive because the order win momentum from KC has been strong. Back to you. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Well, uh, you must keep IDBI Bank on your radar. Uh, yesterday, CMT 18 broke the news. Uh, our colleague Sapna Das pointed out that LIC uh, may be doing an open offer for uh, IDBI Bank, uh, although it hasn't yet approached SEBI, it is expected to. Now, uh, yesterday we did see a 15% rise in IDBI. I just want to pull out that stock for you, probably a six month of that chart, because the six month high low is. 85 rupees and a low of 47 rupees, which means mm. that works out to an average of, you know, over 70 rupees. And therefore, there could be a continuation of the rally. Uh, let's remember, this is not a done deal. It's not as if SEBI has announced it. But the expectation is that it is going to come, in which case there could be more headroom. Okay. Well, uh, 
there is also an expectation that the board meet that Fortis would have would finally talk about who the uh, winner is in this entire saga. Ekta is here to tell us more about that. Ekta. Hi, thanks Sonia for that. Well, Fortis did announce that they are going to hold a board meet on Friday the 13th in order to decide a fundraising by the board for the company and this would be by an issue of preferential allotment of shares and uh, you know I, I tried to confirm this that uh, this is actually going to be a board meet to decide the final bidder between Manipal TPG as well as IHH so Friday should be the D-Day for Fortis. Okay but uh, stay on Ekta, Pfizer on your radar as well? Uh, well, actually, a lot of the pharma companies would be on my radar, such as Sun Pharma, Aurobindo, Lupin. All of them were impacted yesterday because Trump hit out against Pfizer for raising product prices in the U.S. But now Pfizer, after talking to Donald Trump, according to uh, you know a tweet by him, they have rolled back those price hikes. So maybe there would be a relief rally indicating that Trump won't act too aggressively against pharma companies and would be happy with these kind of measures. Okay, well, uh, thanks for that. Let's also talk about some more stocks that are in the news this morning. Anisha? Uh, well, yes, Sonia, I'll start with PC Jewelers. Now, it looks like a positive news because they announced that in quarter gone by, they have achieved 20% quarter-on-quarter growth in terms of their sales. They have added two stores as well as they say that the exports have actually grown in double digit. Interesting because remember, Titan had told us uh, uh, in the Q1 update that the, the market is a bit subdued. Also, uh, interestingly, the date of the release of PC Jewelers is 25th May. So, we don't know whether it is a typo or there is a genuine error but that is something to keep an eye out on so that was about pc jewelers but moving on to india bulls housing uh, uh, wherein the company has actually bought back ncds worth around 160 crores now abhishek tells me it might be a bit of dampener because now cost of funds of the company might go up because uh, the lower cost debentures might have to be uh, uh, taken care of by the higher cost debentures other than that, MBL infrastructure will be in focus because there is some preferential allotment that has been made to the promoters and now their holding stands at around 68.5%. There have been some rumours regarding uh, promoters selling in this particular account. It has been really volatile, so this might uh, assuage concerns of certain investors. Uh, Shalimar Paints is also in focus because remember, the re-establishment of Nasdaq plant is in focus and that can be a positive for the counter. Back to you. Alright, thank you very much for that and for pointing out the date of the PC Jewelers release, uh, it's important for us to put that detail.